Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making an old-fashioned fresh apple cake. Now this cake is very basic and it's a very old recipe. It's the kind of cake that my granny made and her granny made and I guess on back. It uses fresh apples and I happen to have apples in my yard. So I've got like four apple trees. My early apples are gold and delicious. Folks talk a lot about what variety of apple do I need to use in a recipe and there's all this stuff about the best cooking apples. You can cook with any apple. Golden Delicious generally are not recommended for cooking, but they work just fine in this recipe. They'll work in your apple fritters, they'll work in your fried apple pies, they'll work in your regular apple pies. You know, all of your apple recipes, you can use them if you have a tree. It's about the end of the season for them. They come in like late June, and then I'll have them through the end of June and on mo through most of July, and then wine saps and the other apples that are in the yard get ripe, and I've just got apples everywhere at that point. But anyway, what you need for this cake is about four cups of diced up apples. Now, I have about a quarter of a cup of um, orange juice down in here, which you can't even see anymore, but you have to put your apples in something or they turn very, very brown and mine are starting to turn brown anyway because I was getting this all ready for y'all. But uh, about a quarter of a cup of orange juice in there or a little bit of lemon juice. If you don't have that, you can dice them up in plain old water and just drain it off when you're done or drain most of it off when you're done. Just keep them covered in cold water and that'll keep them from turning brown. Now for flavor, I also have a cup of chopped pecans. You can use any chopped nuts or you can leave the nuts completely out of this if you want to. I have a cup and a half of sugar. I'm gonna put in a couple teaspoons of vanilla and you need a cup of fat. Now I have split mine up. I'm using a half a cup of melted butter and a half a cup of oil. You can use all melted butter. You can use all oil. Um, just doesn't matter. I like the butter in the apple cake but a whole cup of butter is kind of expensive and I didn't want to have to take out a loan to make a cake with apples that I had in the yard. Anyway, you want two cups of all-purpose flour and you want about two tablespoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of salt, and we're going to put about a tablespoon of cinnamon in this to flavor it with. And you can spice it up a little bit if you want to. You can add like nutmeg and allspice and um, oh, different things like that. Ginger, as much spice as you want in it. Me, it kind of gives me indigestion, so I just do the cinnamon in this mostly. Anyway, oh, and you need four eggs. Let's get this mixed up and get it in the oven. You can, if you don't have four eggs and you're on a tight budget, you can cut it back to two eggs but the eggs are gonna make it really moist and I, it's also gonna give it a real good crumble and since you've got all these diced apples in it, I like it with the four eggs in it. Mix your eggs up a little bit and you can go ahead and dump your oil and your butter in there. Dump the oil and the butter. All right, go ahead and dump in your sugar you can adjust that sugar too. I'm using a cup and a half. Um, these apples are kind of sweet, so I probably could have cut that down to a cup. If you're using a real sour apple, you might want two cups. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in my pecans and my apples with the orange juice in them. Um, like I said, if you don't have orange juice, you can just cut them up in some cold water and that'll keep them from turning too brown. The orange juice, though, does add just a dash of flavor to the cake, and I really kind of like that flavor that it adds, but, you know, there ain't no need to go out and buy orange juice to make this cake if you don't already have any in your kitchen. And I'm going to go ahead and add my vanilla. I like vanilla anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon, and I don't generally measure it. Just add some. <laughs> vanilla makes everything better and our apples and our pecans 
or whatever nut you chose and like I said if you don't have any nuts you don't have to put nuts in it now you can add the rest of your dry ingredients into your flour and I wish I had kept this separate if you save the baking powder until last it actually makes your cake a little lighter and a little fluffier I was told for years that you wanted to add those together and mix them up and it definitely makes it easier to mix the cinnamon in but if you save that baking powder until you put everything else in it does make your baked goods a little bit better but since I forgot because that's a new trick I'm just going to put them all in together give them a little bit of a mix before you dump it in there and like I said that'll make that cinnamon much much easier to mix in with your wet ingredients sometimes it tends to lump up and you don't want that and just dump this in here you can also if you want to sift your flour you can do that um, like as you dump it in there sift it it will make it a little bit lighter it adds a little more air into it but that's up to you um, sometimes granny would and sometimes she wouldn't I mean, if you was making a cake to take to the county fair to be judged, you sure might want to sift it to make it a little lighter and hold that baking powder off to make it a little lighter. But that's kind of all there is to mixing this cake up. Now, depending on your oven, and maybe if you had that orange juice in your apples or if you used water and then you drained it or how much liquid you have in it you're going to want to bake this cake anywhere from 45 minutes to about 55 minutes uh, it should bounce back and you know you should be able to do a clean toothpick or clean cake tester make sure you get your flour all mixed in with your wet ingredients definitely 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 don't want to get out a mixer for this you'll have apple chunks all over your ceiling if you try to use an electric mixer and you don't need it anyway it stirs up in just a minute this is a pretty thick batter um, and you can bake this in a 9 by 13 pan like I have here or you can do it in a bump pan you can do it in a muffin pan and do like uh, breakfast muffins this would be a really good breakfast muffin recipe you could even do it in a loaf pan I suppose a couple of loaf pans though it wouldn't fit in one you can do it in a layer cake but I don't think most folks do this particular cake in a layer cake but it's just kind of up to you and do it based on the event you're making it for um, if you're if you live alone maybe do it in a muffin pan or the big muffins and then freeze part of it because it does freeze well uh, if you're doing it for a Sunday dinner maybe pick a decorative pan if you're doing it to take it somewhere do one of your metal pans with a lid on it and those work really good but anyways that's all there is to mixing it up now we're going to put it in a preheated 350 degree oven and like I said we're going to bake it depending on your oven and how much liquid you had in it anywhere from 45 to 55 minutes until it's done bouncy toothpick or cake tester comes out clean okay this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven it should be nice and brown on the top it should bounce back and like I said a toothpick or um, a cake tester <laughs> should come out nice and clean now you can top this a lot of different ways or not top it at all if you're doing it with for breakfast you might want to leave it just like this you can make a simple powdered sugar glaze with a little bit of powdered sugar milk and vanilla we've done those in a lot of videos and pour that over it you can dust it with powdered sugar you can make what I have over here which is a brown sugar glaze this is the same glaze that I put on our oatmeal cake when I did it it's just a cup of brown sugar a stick of butter a little bit of milk and a little bit of vanilla you can also do a cream cheese frosting to go on this and we've done cream cheese frostings on a lot of stuff cream cheese frosting would be good with breakfast cream cheese frosting is a more modern topping though i think and i like the brown sugar glaze with this it kind of has a caramel taste to it um, and you know caramel and apple just goes together 
this is still warm and you do want to put it on your cake when it's warm and all I'm going to do is just pour this brown sugar glaze over top of my cake. You can poke some holes in your cake if you want to and let this kind of run down in it. If the cake is warm, it should kind of soak into it and you don't need to worry about that. And mine's already starting to cool down a little bit and so is my brown sugar glaze. But that's kind of all there is to it. And this one here I am making to take to a family reunion that I'm trying to get to. It's up in New Jersey and it is my father's mother's family that is having this reunion. I still have a few great uncles who go to the reunion, a few of her brothers, a lot of her nieces and nephews, and I have never met any of them, I don't think. We did go up there when I was a very young child once, but I don't think I've ever met any of them. So I'm going to a family reunion where I don't know a soul and hopefully meet some distant cousins and some great aunts and uncles and stuff like that. And I'm going to take this cake because at family reunions, people bring a dish. So this is going to be my dish at this family reunion that I have never been to before and where I know no one. So that'll be kind of a different experience. So I'm going on kind of an adventure this weekend. <laughs> Before I leave, I want to leave you with a couple of verses from the end of Matthew 6, starting kind of in the middle of verse 32 and going to verse 34. Your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take, therefore, no thought of the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And this comes after a parable that Jesus told about how God takes care of the wild things. And a lot of folks have interpreted that to mean that we should not ever plan for tomorrow. You know, things like planting apple trees so that we have food <laughs> For the future and I'm gonna tell you if you've even got a little bitty yard you can plant some fruit trees and some nut trees and they will produce a lot of food in hard times they'll produce a lot of food in good times too and it's fresh food but a lot of folks take though that parable that Jesus told in Matthew chapter 6 and they say well it means that you know we're just not supposed to care about tomorrow at all God's gonna take care of it we should trust him because that's what Christians do well, they kind of miss the point. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says be lazy, where it says don't work. And in fact, there's a whole lot of places in the Bible where it says if you don't work, you don't eat. It says put away when times are good. When there's plenty, you're supposed to put it away for when times are bad. What the parable is telling us is not to worry about it. As long as we seek God first, as long as we do His work first, first. He's going to supply all of our needs. That don't mean we get up in the morning and read the Bible and pray and then sit there the rest of the day and wait on God to drop blessings from heaven on our heads. God expects us to work. He expects us to prepare for the tomorrow, but he does not want us to worry about tomorrow. And as long as we seek him first, as long as we put God first, we won't have to worry about tomorrow. It should not be a concern. Like I said, that doesn't mean that you don't work, that you don't prepare, that you don't put back. And I really think the people that are using that as an excuse not to save for retirement or not to can at the end of a harvest season or not to plant in the spring, that's kind of, um, you're missing the point. Anyway, that's just my thought. I want to thank y'all so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. I'm going to link a playlist to all of our Apple videos because this is Apple season. And I'm going to put links to all these toppings that I said you could put on this in the description of the video. Until next time, remember 
to put God first.